Hey everybody and welcome to another painting video. Today I'm going to be painting this Sheriff of Nottingham miniature which is actually for the board game Sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, and he's kind of a he's a bit of a chonky boy. I'm not even sure what he's used for in the game. I've never played it. I'm familiar with it but I've never played it. You probably just use this as a indicator of who is currently the sheriff uh, and as I said he is he is on the big side uh, this is being a standard clone trooper 28 millimeter ish mini and so yeah kinda big so he's actually already been primered uh, and he we can just go straight to paint from here the the mini is a uh, semi-soft plastic. It's not really soft plastic, but it's not it's not a hard um, polystyrene. This is what you would expect a kind of modern board game miniature to be made of, uh, and it's fine. So I'm going to get started in my normal fashion. So, like I said, I've already done primer on this. Uh, that is black um, Steinol Res primer. From Badger. This is my favorite primer and it works really good on uh, all of your board game style plastics. I'm going to be coating this with my airbrush with a mix of five parts of Createx Color 4012 Reducer and three parts War Colors Warm Gray 2. This is not strictly a necessary step. Um, some people like to primer in white to kind of save this step. I like uh, Warm Gray 2 as a starting base, uh, starting, starting point for all of my painting. I, I don't even have a good specific reason for it. Uh, but I do, I do frequently use this as my starting point. Um, now I like to do a top-down coat, uh, kind of Zenithal highlight coat. This gives me the opportunity to take a look at the detail. It, right up front. Uh, it also will be helpful in later defining shadows and highlights. But again, this isn't a necessary step for you. This is just what I like to start with. Oh good, I got a nice thumbprint on there. Alright, we're going to let that dry, and I'll be right back. So deciding where to start is usually your first big decision. Uh, in this case, I am... He's, he's predominantly red. Uh, the red is going to go kind of everywhere. Uh, except his head. So I'm going to do the reds first and my red of choice for this first coat is War Colors Red 4 which I'm applying with the airbrush in the same mix that I used for the, uh, the warm gray. I'm not trying to do full coverage all at once. And one of the nice things here is that uh, red tends to be a fairly transparent color. 
so that uh, Xenothal overspray that I did with the warm gray is going to pay off a little bit here by providing uh, some subtle shadows and highlights with the red, especially, well, all of the red, especially all of the red. <laughs> All right, on to the next step. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do here is apply a little wash to get some shadows. And this is Warcolors Purple 5, which I frequently like to use in this case. It's a, it's a red purple, it's not like a lavender. and it makes for nice shadow colors. And it's gonna work, it should work especially well on these shoulders. But it should uh, keep some richness in the color, in the shadows. And I'm just mixing the paint with uh, water, and I don't know exactly what the mix is, but you can kind of see how how thin that is. I want to make sure that I get a good amount into the uh, into the crevices on the cloak. I'm not so concerned about the rest of it. Oops, running short. And then I can just kind of blend it out to make sure I'm not gonna get any weird tide marks. All right, now that's gonna take a little while to dry. We'll be back. Okay, next up is going to be more red. Uh, we're gonna go brighter. This is uh, Warcolors Red 2 mix the same way in the airbrush and I'm mostly just going to be working on uh, his cape and his clothing not really to include the arms although maybe a little bit but these are going to be really light coats focused on the upper levels I'm definitely not trying to get an even coat across the board because I am trying to brighten the color uh, on the areas that I want to highlight and again, the transparency of the color is going to help us out here in that even the overspray won't really amount to much in the, uh, in the lower levels. So as long as you're pretty good at focusing in on those areas that you want to highlight, you shouldn't 
go far wrong here. And again, this can be done with a brush. Uh, I use an airbrush because I can make it faster. I can make it go a lot faster with nice, thin, smooth coats. And some people can do that faster with a brush, so... If that describes you... then feel free to do this with a brush. coming out nice. The extra blue in the uh, in the shadows I think works really well. I'm going to go directional on the stomach here, going uh, from top to bottom. That way the overspray uh, fades off really quickly at the point that the curve starts to go under. And that gives you a nice, a nice shadow down there. In here, I'm just sort of lightly touching the exposed areas. There's a lot, I mean, everything in there is essentially in shadow, but I do want there some, to be some differentiation between the darkest shadows and the more exposed areas of the red there. That is a nice, rich red color. I'm gonna go clean brush again and do this with the arms. All right, be right back. Okay, so I'm moving to the brush and I'm just going to start highlighting the red on the strips of red cloth on the, the sleeves here. I don't even know what you would call that. But we are going to have to start uh, moving away from the airbrush at this point. I also want to point out that this is a super cheap brush. This is like a 40 cent brush that is perfectly adequate for this situation. I did a video not too long ago about the uh, the wonders of cheap brushes and this is kind of what I was talking about in that case these brushes work really really well oh by the way I did kind of do a little switch up here instead of using the Colors Red 2 I'm using Instar Paints Pure Red uh, they are a little bit more pigment dense and they work great straight from the bottle. And their coverage is good, but it's not too good. It's a very good layer paint. I just wish it was more generally available in the States as opposed to the UK, which is where they're based. But it matches up really, really well with uh, the War Colors Red 2 that we were using previously.
I'm going back into some of the places where I feel like it could use a little bit more brightness. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next step. Okay, at this point, I think I'm going to try uh, blocking in a, another base coat for some of the other colors, just so I can start seeing the mini uh, and the direction I should go with it. I like to do this with a kind of a neutral mid gray. This is a warm gray three. And primarily I want to see the sleeves. They are going to be a warm white when they're complete. So this is a good deep shadow color for those. But I'm going to be using this in a number of different places. Okay, we got all that back on there. And that'll make a nice base both for uh, the, the variety of whites, primarily his, uh, the fur piece here and his sleeves, that, parts of the sleeves that aren't red anyway, uh, and a nice base for washes that will come afterwards, like in his hair and his boots and his gloves. But I also want to do a base for his gold trim on his tunic. So I'm using some Scale Color Artist uh, Burnt Umber. It's a nice uh, nicely coating paint it'll uh, you know two light coats will, will get it done and we're just going to put that on the trim area
Okay, and we'll let that dry. I realize that the um, the red on the shoulders has a yellow gold uh, trim. Same yellow gold as on the trim on the tunic. So I laid down a little uh, black there. And now I'm going to try to fill that in without too much of a <laughs> too much sloppiness. But I, I was going to do the white sleeve and then I realized I needed to do that and it's going to be much easier to clean up the white sleeve while it's still gray than once it becomes white. So let's see if I can do this. By the way, I don't think I mentioned I'm using Four Colors Metallic Bright Gold. separates really badly in the bottle and takes forever to uh, to get it mixed properly. Now oh, this is better. Yeah, that's much better. It is, it's separating right here on the uh, on the palette, which is very annoying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop some on the tunic here. So you can see a little bit better how that looks. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the bulk of this off camera so I can get it up close to my face. Get all of this here to do. I have a complaint about the color at all is that it's a little bit too bright and not enough yellow to it, but that's okay. That is going to look good. All right, let me go finish up all of that gold trim and we'll be back. So there's all the gold. Now, the, uh, the shoulders there and the sleeves are pretty messy. And I, I want to maintain 
the uh, black line separation between the red and the gold and the white. Uh, and the easiest way for me to clean this up right now is with a pen. So this is a uh, Pigma Micron 005. And I use this for a lot of uh, black lining. And there are two things you need to keep in mind when you're using one of these is that one is you want to make sure your paint is dry before you start and the other is you want to have a really light touch uh, you don't want to gouge into the paint because that'll force paint up into the pen and you'll ruin your pen just as if you would dip that into wet paint either way bad news for your pen so I am just going to line the spaces between the colors and again so much easier than using a brush at least for me these pens are also great for pen lines on vehicles spaceships stuff like that There's also, the, like the gold has a trim, uh, the inner and outer portions of the gold. Uh, are supposed to be white. Okay, I'm gonna go finish this up and I'll be back. All right, so I've got that all cleaned up. I even took some of the gray and uh, cleaned that up as well because I had certainly gotten some gold on there. Uh, now I'm gonna take some Seraphim Sepia shade from Citadel and I'm gonna wash the gold. This is a good wash color when you want your gold to remain yellow. Um, I'm going to go in off camera and do the shoulders because that's going to take a little bit more control than I can do on camera. But otherwise, that is pretty much done there. Okay, be right back. All right, next step, I am going to put a wash on the gloves, the boots, and the trim on this shoulder here. I'm going to be using a Scale Color Artist Art Black. It's a very pigment dense color, but I'm going to use it rather thinly. I want it to co cover, but I don't want it to cover completely. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, that's looking. That's about what I was looking for. I'll probably come back with another coat. If you're wondering why I use so many brands of paint, um, it's mostly because I really like trying different brands of paint and then I'll find something that I really like in a line 
and I'll keep using it while I can. And I, you know, I just remember what it is that I liked about that paint and I'll pick it up when I want to get that effect. So in this case, I'm looking for a wash that's going to cover, cover really well, um, roll into the recesses, uh, but not leave the upper areas too bright. And I knew that this would do that. It's pretty challenging getting into the the deep recesses. All right, while that uh, black wash dries, I'm going to work on the sleeves, the whites of the sleeves this time. And I've got some uh, Warcolors Warm Gray 2. You'll recall that this was the color that we uh, sprayed on initially. But it's gonna be going a lot brighter this time. And I'm kind of just over brushing for now. I don't mind if I get a little bit in the uh, in the recesses, but if I do, I'm gonna uh, use the brush to spread it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go and do this step on the rest of the sleeves, and then I'll be back. All right, next step is uh, another highlight. This time is going to be Warm Gray 1. This is very close to white. Really almost a, a cream color. And I will be very carefully applying this just in the highest points Okay, that looks pretty good. I just realized I should be doing the same thing on his collar and the little rough part of the collar. There's these little points coming out, like a shirt collar, and then the, the ruffle right there. So I'll probably go do that off camera. Um, Oh, right, and his fur, huh. All right, well, I'm gonna get started on the fur as well off camera, but it's essentially going to be 
the same kind of thing. I just don't think we're going to use as much of the uh, of the highlight color. And I'm considering the possibility of some airbrush here, but uh, I don't know. So I'm going to do a little bit more of that as well and uh, make a decision on that and be back. I'm waiting for the uh, fur to dry now and in the meantime I'm going to actually do a little highlighting on the black. Uh, I'm using Warcolor's Warm Gray 5 and I'm just touching some knuckles and tips of fingers. I'm going to go around some of the edging here. And in, in general, just pick up some high points to highlight. And then we'll probably do another step on that afterwards. Another step up in color anyway. Oh, I got some something on the uh, on the red there. I'm gonna have to go fix that. But not right now. Okay, maybe a little bit right now. I still have a little bit of this purple that I can put on there. That's a good patch. All right, I'm gonna grab another color. Be right back. Just stepping through the whole warm gray family here. This is gonna be uh, warm gray four. Just touching some of the highlight areas. Okay, that's good for now. I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna get back to that fur now. Um, in the picture, the fur is a little bit yellower than the uh, sleeves. So I've decided to go with uh, just a little thin wash, maybe even a glaze of buff from Scale Color. It's also a little bit darker than the warm gray too. Not much though, but it'll warm it up. I definitely wanted this to be a little bit different from the other off-white colors we were using.
because I'm probably going to highlight this with ivory, which is very bright, but it is also another more yellow color than, say, the warm gray one. Okay, need to let that dry. All right, so uh, we're going with vanilla white. I was thinking it was ivory, but it's actually vanilla white. Uh, to highlight the fur. And I like fur, it's easy to highlight. You know what, I was gonna use this holder, but it's not working with the camera very well. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, that looks good. We'll be back. Since I have that uh, buff color out, I am gonna put some on his leggings, his pants. I don't know what these are. But this will make a good base for washing a brown into there. Actually, I may use the uh, Seraphim Sepia that I used to wash the gold. It's another one of my kind of go-to colors. You can do a lot with it. I kind of wish I'd worked with this earlier. This is going to require some touch up later. Oops. Like that. Okay. You know what? As long as we're doing that. Um, we'll use it on the bags as well. Ooh, that was close. let all that dry and we'll be back while I was waiting for everything to dry I uh, just dropped some silver on the studs on his gloves and shoulder uh, I realized I hadn't actually done the gold and silver on his badge so I did that and that's pretty much the same way I did this trim here um, although the trim didn't have any silver so I had to add that and now I'm going to go ahead and put some Seraphim Sepia, Sepia on his legs. Just going to do straight wash on that. And there. And now I'm going to use some Agrax Earth Shade on the bags.
just a real quick wash not too heavy I don't want it I don't want there to be that much contrast on there I'll probably come back with the uh, buff color and smooth it out a little bit when this dries out okay okay so uh, actually what I'm gonna do is <laughs> wasn't quite done with this yet I'm gonna put some of this on the scabbard of the sword That's going over the warm gray three that we put on there earlier. All right, now I'm gonna go and let this all dry. Okay, coming back to the buff. I got a real thin mix of this. carefully brush it over everything. Uh, I do want it to go into the recesses. I don't want it to completely cover the wash. I just want it to um, bring that tone back up a little bit so there's not quite as much contrast. of the opening of the bag here. I actually want that contrast there. And then kind of the same thing down here on this other bag. I think there's uh, some little ties on this. And I don't think, oh no, they are. Okay, they do figure into there. I'm gonna darken up the little strings with the Agrax Earthshade again. So there are all these little diamonds in the trim, and those need to be red. But I'm going to base them with, this is uh, War Colors Red 5, and that'll be our starting point. are done. And then we'll move on to Instar Pure Red. Concentrate on the upper half. And then make. 
make another pass on them. Alright, and now I'm going to mix a little bit of the uh, warm gray one into there to make kind of almost a pink, creamy pink. Alright, let's move on to the next step. I realized that I hadn't done the studs on the uh, the boots when I did the ones on the gloves. So I took care of that. I still have, there's a, a like a leather brown wrap around the knees. I gotta get to that. But for right now, I'm gonna focus on his head. Uh, and to start with, I'm going to paint his hair black. So I'm using the same black that I used on the gloves earlier. Gloves and boots. And I'm also applying it very thinly. going to base this in for now. I'll finish it up after I do his face. It's a little tough to figure out where the fur ends and the hair begins. Okay, next step is going to be the face, and the base color for the flesh will be Warcolor's Flesh 5, which is a color I found to be a little weird, and when I first got it, I never used it, and I find some, in some instances, it's actually pretty cool. This is definitely one of them. Uh, he's got an odd, in the artwork, he has a fairly odd skin tone, and I think this is going to work really well as the base. Alright, I'm going to wait for that to dry, do another thin coat, and uh, then I'll be back. Okay, now I've mixed up uh, uh, kind of equal parts Flesh 5 and Flesh 1 to get this weird putty-like color here. And that is my first highlight color. I'm going to go over most of the flesh areas, just leaving the uh, the deepest recesses in the original color.
Okay, I'm going to mix in some more of the uh, flesh one to get this a little brighter. I'll make another highlight pass. not like the fact that the sculptor looks like he just pushed like a push pin into the eyes <laughs> and the uh, so they he created the pupil but it also dug into the uh, surrounding flesh and it looks really gross. Alright, now I think I'm just going to go for this really mostly flesh one bit that I got there and see about doing some final highlights. It's very thin. Grotesquely pale. In the monitor, it looks super high contrast, but in reality, it is not quite that. I think it, it usually looks better uh, in the final video than it does on these tiny monitors. Alright, so with that done, I'm going to grab some of the uh, purple five I have left over from earlier and make a, make a thin glaze. that see what that looks like on his lower lip area all the way up into the mouth there and just a bit on the upper lip in fact I'm gonna take a bit of that off of there okay thing under the nose. having a hard time figuring out the, uh, the geography of the face here because that's his beard so that can't be sitting on his lower lip which means that I now have to put put some chin color back in there That is better. 
it's just the, the whole mouth is very ill-defined whereas in the uh, in the picture it's not you can actually really easily see what he looks like or where everything goes where the lip is where the chin is I'm gonna try and get some of that black back in there This uh, warm gray one out here still. Oh, you know what? I can't use. I need a better brush for this. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, I'm going to sit on that for a little bit. I think we're going to come back and do some hair. All right, um, one of the last things I did before turning the camera on <laughs> was I, I dotted the eyes. I, I think you'll recall that we have these little indentations in the eyes and the eyelids. Um, I dropped some black into those dots just to better define the pupils um, and actually what the nice thing about that is also sort of detracts from the uh, the deformation of the eyelids from whatever happened when uh, uh, the depressions were put into the eyes so that's that's nice uh, I'm gonna work on the hair now and out here I've got uh, this is Cool gray, it was War Colors Cool Gray 5, 4, 3, and 1, I believe. Or is it 4, 3? No, it says 4, 3, 2, and 1. That's what it is. And so I'm going to start with 4. And I am going to. I'm going to be focusing. Primarily on the uh, areas uh, that are raised, as usual, and doing highlights. I'm not, at the moment, focusing on individual strands. Uh, that would, it's a little early for that, but I am avoiding the deeper recesses of the groups of hair. One of those things you kind of have to look at the whole uh, the whole batch of hair and see what makes sense in the moment if I do too much of this color this hair won't really be black anymore it'll be gray <clears throat> but um, if I focus too much on the individual strands of hair will look furry and unkempt so I'm gonna have to find a, a happy medium uh, and this is working out this seems to be doing pretty well this uh, this is still a fairly dark gray and so he still looks to have black hair I'm going to do, well, 
was going to do his mustache and beard separate, but I think I can touch a little bit on it. Not the, not the mustache. Maybe the eyebrows? I'm going to want to get up close to do the mustache. It's so razor thin. Looking pretty good. All right. Okay. Uh, let's move up a tone. So this is War Colors three. Great. Uh, I'm sorry. Cool gray three. Just focusing on the uppermost areas of the parts of the hair that I just did. So prominent curves and such. I'm still kind of putting it down into the recesses of those areas as well. Seems seems weird, but for the effect that I th I'm trying to achieve, I think this will work out. artwork his hair has sort of a sheen to it but it also looks uh, well kept and like perhaps oiled so again I don't want it to look furry Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, and then I've got Cool Gray 2. And again, being more focused. And now I'm also looking at the individual strands. placing the paint there and leaving the previous color in the recess. So now it's like uppermost curves and then the points where the, the hair ends. All right, and then Cool Gray 1, just gonna do some really Just small bits of highlight in the highest points on the individual strands. I realize now I had been neglecting the beard. bit 
too much with that, I think. So I'm gonna knock it back down and try again. Okay, I need to bring this up to my face. Uh, so I'm gonna finish off the mustache and beard and the eyebrows, and then we've just got a few things left. So I just realized as I was trying to redefine the beard that the I had completely misidentified uh, the mouth. I had the lower lip coming all the way down here but the beard comes up to a point there and then I realized well these are the lips in here so I washed over some of the uh, purple five over the lips and now I'm just going to use a little bit of flesh five to highlight that lower lip Yeah, and then that looks, that looks really good. But man, yeah, when I was looking at that, um, when I was doing the face, I just could not see the mouth properly. Uh, and it's just because it's, it's, he's got such a weird face. Uh, so anyway, uh, at this point, I am going to, I've got some of the burnt umber. I'm gonna thin a little bit of that. more there we go and then I'm going to do the straps on his sword and I'll try to get on the back side of that uh, off camera I just remembered I need to do the uh, this band at the knee of his boots. It's like a leather brown. So again, I'm going to start with the uh, the raw umber since I have it here handy. We'll go over the whole thing with that. and then let that dry. Okay, a couple of things I've done. I put some silver on the buckle, on the hilt and handle, and this little nubbin down there. Uh, and I put some, uh, what is it, cool gray four perhaps? Maybe five. Onto the knees of the boots, because it turns out I had another look at the artwork, the brown wrappings really just go uh, above and below the knee and then this little black area sticks out and then I've got some uh, war colors black that I'm going to use as a wash just mixing it with a little water uh, the difference between using the war colors as a wash and the other wash I've been doing is that um, the war colors will tend to find the recesses a little more without um, sticking as much on the upper surfaces. I mean, it's still going to be up there, but um, the scale color is going to wood, I should say, not going to because I'm not using it, but would darken the, the silver even more. Now I'm, I am going to go back and uh, re-highlight this a little bit, but this should mean that I don't have as much to worry about as far as that goes. And then a little bit on the buckle. And this little piece here is a little weird. 
it, it's really, I think it's just supposed to be like a, just a little triangle of metal right there at the end, but eh, it is what it is. Now I'm gonna thin this a little bit more. Put it over these knees. And bring the black back into that. All right. We're just about there. Almost. One more thing I want to do here while I got your attention is uh, I'm going to take some of the buff and I'm going to try to define this area, the, the, um, the ties on the bag. It's, it just looks kind of bleh right now. So I'm going to do a little highlight that sort of points out that this is a, like a string. As opposed to a weird uh, lump on the bag. Yeah, that's that's a little better, and you know it sort of brings out the same thing as here. There is some detail on there that indicates this, but it is almost not there. So I wanted to bring that out, and let me see another little detail. I just realized uh, I've got so this is going to be the War Colors Warm Gray one, the off white sort of creamy color, and put it on these beads right here in the artwork that's they are about this color I don't know if they're supposed to be like pearls or what have you but whatever they were they are definitely brighter than they were a moment ago all right I think oh yeah highlighting on that so I gotta I have to wait for this black to dry and then I will come back and do a little highlight on that silver. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, uh, this highlight I'm gonna do on the silver, which actually I'm really happy with where that is right now. Uh, but I do wanna have a little bit of a brighter kick to some of it. Uh, I'm gonna use War Colors Pewter. And uh, War Colors Pewter is uh, a sort of yellowy tint, just slightly yellowy, uh, not too bright silver. It's one of my favorite of their metallic colors. It's just, it's a good aged metallic like a good aged silver. It works really, really well in this situation. As a highlight on something you don't want to be too bright. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I think uh, I'm just about done. So at this point, all that's left is I need to uh, finish the edge of the base. Uh, I'd already put some black on the top of the base. Uh, and I'm going to be using my primer on that because it holds really, really well. And then I'm going to clear coat it because it's probably going to get some handling. And so it needs to be able to withstand that. Um, my go-to clear coat right now is uh, a mix of, not that one. So I do a mix of airbrush medium and uh, from Liquitex and then their matte varnish. And I do about equal parts of both. 
I like the matte varnish on its own. It's very flat, but it also tends to uh, to be too flat, and it will uh, desaturate your colors. And I don't like that so much. If you add some of the airbrush medium, uh, that sort of evens out some of the flatness so that the effect is not a dead flat finish um, but it is a good finish it's a good protecting finish and it will uh, not really subdue your colors so I like that a lot and that's obviously going to go through the airbrush um, there are a number of spray uh, like rattle can clear coats that work pretty well but I would also hesitate to put them on any mini that is this kind of plastic because you just never know what the effect is going to be a lot of times it just never cures out and you end up with this kind of tacky figure that's constantly picking up uh, picking up dust and you don't want that so anyway you don't ever get that problem with the uh, Liquitex mix whether or even if you're just going to use the matte varnish on its own you won't have that problem with it so I'm going to do that uh, I'm going to I'm going to do those things. I'm going to do the base. I'm going to do the clear coat, and then I'm going to take it out into the studio and shoot some pictures so that you can see what this looks like complete and uh, in good lighting. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.